Hello, I'm Orbiter and welcome to another tutorial where we're going to engineer an interplanetary transfer. In other words, we're going to go to another planet from Kirby and I'll show you how you do it. But first off, let's have a look at this website. Okay, this is the website I was on about, ksp.olex.biz and this basically gives you the information you require or to make the most efficient burn to another planet. Okay, you can see the Let's do an example, right? You choose a region as Kirby or whatever plant you're from, Duna as your destination, 100 km parking orbit, and it gives you all this information. Your phase angle is the angles you need between the planets in relation to Kerbal, the Sun, that you require to do your burn. And then you have your ejection angle, and that's your angle in your orbit around Kirby. You can see it's using Kirby Pro Gate with the planet's orbit direction. And then you have your ejection velocity, and that's the way you know how fast you're going to leave the planet. And then you have your ejection burn. That's how much delta V you require to do your burn for your interplanetary trip. Now this site is excellent because it gives you all this information. It gives you this nice arc. It gives you your most efficient burn, and you can use it for any planet, even on of the inner planets, like say Eve. You can see the burn is slightly different here. But we're not going to go to Eve, we're going to go to Dunar. Okay, now we're finally in orbit around Kirby. And all we have to do is fast forward time. As you see here, I'm using Kerbal Engineer Redux mod. And it gives you your phase angle. But it also gives your intercept angle. So all you need to do really is get that intercept angle down to close to zero as you can. And then you can do your burn. See now we're coming close. At the moment, this is all post commentary by the way. At this time, I was more concentrated on the phase angle. I wasn't too, too sure about the Kerbal Engineer Redux mod because I know it has trouble sometimes, like calculating your delta V. Or whether that's been fixed, I'm not entirely sure. But we'll find out. Hopefully, the interplanetary calculator online also is accurate enough. Okay, we need 44.36 degrees, and that's close enough. A little bit, a little way away. And you saw there I was using the space station, which I put to a 500 kilometer orbit. And that was so we could fast forward time as fast as possible. Right, now that's done, go to your spacecraft and let's click on that orbit. It doesn't give you the angle here, but we'll guess at 150 degrees is by here. Now, all you have to do is go prograde as long as you're in a nice, perfect circular orbit around the equator. Standard launch procedures, please. And you'll be perfectly fine. That's because the only reason why that is because Duna is not on an inclination on its orbit around Kerbal. So you do not have to worry about it. Anyway, let's get this maneuver node. You see here, that is where we should intercept Duna, or roughly. Let's get this up to about 1014 meters per second. Okay, now we have a closest approach marker. Uh, let's see, 85 million kilometers away from target. Boosting up, no, it doesn't get us any closer. So you'll have to fiddle with the maneuver note here. Now you can also adjust your prograde and retrograde markers, but you can also move your maneuver node around a bit. Now let's just move it across a bit and see what we get. Okay, no intercept, no closest approach yet. Let's do the bit of prograde. Well, and we have an intercept. That's brilliant. That is all we need. Duner encounter. And let's go and head there, I suppose. And you see here also we got 1,043.5 meters per second. The website was quite on the money. So let's do that burn. And then magically, whoop, we're already on our way. So let's go and fast forward time. And say you're not going to get the intercept. Let's say once you leave Tuner, you're not get that intercept is gone. I'm going to show you how what to do there. See, that intercept marker, our Tuner periapsis has disappeared. So what you have to do, halfway across your orbit, 
they have to be halfway, not when you're near tuna, because that means you require more fuel. The further out you do it, the more you can change this. Okay, let's do a bit of prograde, and you see there, we've got our tuna encounter again. So yeah, you ha may have to do course corrections on the way. This is perfectly fine. This is how NASA do it. They check their orbit and say they need slight adjustments and they do it early on in the mission. This conserves a lot of fuel, especially if you have to use a lot of that fuel to alter your orbits when you're closer to the planet, which requires more Delta V then. Okay, a little fiddling with a maneuver node to get our closest approach. I think that's close enough. So we'll go ahead and burn this. Can you see it was only 3.4 meters per second and it was going to take less than a second so you don't even need 100% thrust. That's close enough. Okay, let's see what we've got. 676 kilometers away from the planet, that's pretty good. So let's go and fast forward time there. Right, every time you change through your influence, sometimes the orbits change slightly. I know they're going to fix this in version 1, but at the moment we're stuck with it. So, let's do the best of what we've got. Right, let's go and create an orbit. You can see we're heading under the planet by here. Now, that's pretty that's good if you've got a mapping satellite or something, that you want to create an orbit around the planet and a map the entire planet. That is what you want, a polar orbit it covers more of the planet as the planet rotates but that's not what we want to do so let's go and change this orbit now the best way to change this orbit is again further away from the planet now this one is a bit tricky because we're passing under the planet we want to aim for the side of the planet so we can get a nice circle orbit so i'm going to use one of the radial adjustments and this is where i was fiddling i wasn't sure which is the best to adjust to get into your orbit so you see here i'm adjusting my prograde retrograde and now my normal and anti-normal i think they're my normal anti-normal those those bluish ones i mean the purple ones are radial i believe yes it must be <laughs> and see here i've worked it out if i use the radials now i can get the orbit as close as i dare to Let's aim for close to 100 kilometers, or thereabouts. What have you got here? 180 kilometers. Yes, I think we... Let's... The orbit's at an angle now. Let's go and change that angle. Oh, yeah. Yes. A nice circle orbit. Let's have a zoom in. Yep. You can make a nice... Our equatorial orbit with that so let's go ahead and sometimes when you're burning these it's best to have a look at your result oh and by the way i double clicked on the planet so we're focused there on the planet not the spacecraft okay that's good enough for me we don't need to be 100 percent perfect not for every mission unless your mission starts deep it okay now we can go and circleize our orbit or at least plan to and see there we had a brief encounter with the moon. If you want to travel to the moon, that's quite easy. And the moon's sphere of influence here is quite large. Especially for Minerva's moon, I've got, yeah, Ike is the name of the moon. Anyway, let's get a bit closer. Because we're from first names, t name terms with the planet tuner. We want to land on you. Okay, we're nearing that. Maneuver node. Let's burn. Burn rubber. Or burn nuclear fuel. As you may not may have or may not have noticed, I'm using the nuclear engines for this. The reason why I'm using nuclear engines for this spacecraft because they are the most efficient engines you ha can use in space. They're absolutely terrible in an atmosphere, but they're ab per absolutely perfect for space and interstellar travel. Not interstellar, sorry, interplanetary travel. So I don't believe there's any other planets, uh, any other solar systems in Kerbal Space Program. Although you may have watched Scott Manley's interplanetary missions. Anyway, let's get ourselves into orbit. And there we have it. 
we have successfully completed our mission, our interplanetary transfer. Well guys, if this was helpful, please oh, like or subscribe if you want more of these videos, of more tutorials that will be coming soon. If you did like the video, please click on that like because it helps me a lot. And, well, if you want me to do a specific tutorial, just let me know in the comments below. Anything, I'll give it a go. And we'll try it together, as I say. <laughs> anyway, I'm Orbiter. Thank you for watching. I'm now going to leave you watch me try to land. Trust me. I'm an engineer.